Sardesai, Manohar, and Manohar Bab's family, uh, distinguished dignitaries and friends. Uh, thank you, Edith, for that brilliant summary of your pioneering, path-breaking work. It's really an extraordinary uh, effort, um, very hard work, very committed work, and I must say a very inspired work, inspired clearly by a very inspiring person. You have two, I have two experts on my side. One is Professor French, the other is a writer of Konkani, so I'm not really sure what I'm doing here, but I shall speak very generally and maybe provoke a discussion. Um, the only thing I, I'd like to say about Manohar Bab is that he is in many ways responsible for my writing about Goa, because ever since, I think, um, the 1980s, because I published my book on Graham Greene in 1985. Every time I came back to uh, Goa, he used to say, Te English literature sword, am chikani buroi. This was his constant comment to me every time I walked in. He said, what are you doing with English? And his great anger was that Goa was being represented in terms of its architecture, in terms of its food, in terms of its music, uh, in terms of its colonial legacies. And, and you know, I can actually hear his voice because that I used to stay with my sister-in-law Maureen and that was, and actually the person who introduced me to Manor, Manor Bab was my own professor, uh, Mahali, Kashinath Mahali. And he said, when you go to Goa, you have to first visit Manor Sardesai. So that became a kind of pilgrimage for me every time I came to Goa, which was annually, and every year he said that but it took me many, many more years to have the courage to write about Goa. So, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Edith. I'm going to call you Edith and not Professor Pratad and all that. <laughs> uh, for this much, it's a much needed translation. Uh, and it's, I think, the first scholarly critique which will bring the work of our beloved Manur Bab uh, to a large readership which he deserves, a readership within the country and, a, and, in, and an international readership. I've often thought of Manohar Bab as the bard of Goa because his work has been sung, is always sung. Uh, I remember Pruta singing about it, singing his poems, and I thought she would be asked also to sing today. Uh, she was asked and she refused, that's naughty. Uh, so, uh, well, uh, and uh, well, it's been, you know, his work is admired, uh, is appreciated by the young, and it is further appreciated, that its depths are appreciated by. Uh, by the sophisticated reader. But I recall uh, Madhavi Sardesai telling me once that she had done a round of the primary schools of Goa and she found Manohar Bab's poetry, uh, you know, being recited as nursery rhymes in almost every school, but no one, not, none of the children, of course, but not even the teachers knew that they were rhymes by Manohar Sardesai. Yeah. And she said they were being sung in all the primary schools, and that's why he really is a, a Lok Kavi, you know, he was. He's, um, you know, a kind of home of Goa, if you like. So the book, I think, is a product of her deep appreciation of Manohar Bab, his influence on her own intellectual evolution, and most especially, it is a product of immense concentrated effort and scholarship involving, amazingly, three languages. Manohar Bab's use of the Konkani language cuts across religious barriers, and this is something that has always charmed me and enchanted me about that particular generation, and I'd like later to really discuss that generation, which we have lost, and I'm afraid we are not going to recapture that, that strength anymore. So he, he cut across religious barriers and was easily accessible to all Goans. He made a special effort to reflect the composite, cohesive nature of Goan society in all his work. He embodied a truly Goan cosmopolitanism, and that's what I want to talk about also, and I hope you will all discuss it with me, because it is something that has been in my head for years and years, and when long ago I decided to write about Goa, and I was sitting on a swing in the house of a friend of mine in Delhi, in his garden, he said, what are you going to write about? What is there to write about Goa? And I said, I want to explore the Goan personality. And for me, Manohar Bab is one, I've got a list of other personalities who represent the personality that inspired me. And I hope we will always uh, be able to keep that particular personality, or at least elements of that personality. So cosmopolitanism, a liberal mind, deeply spiritual, 
and that he seems to have eschewed anger, bitterness, frustration, despair from his consciousness. He was committed to the whole process of living in harmony with man and nature in a most creative way, in the way our grandparents were, you know, our agricultural community. Eden's work examines the poems, the lyrical, the social, the political, and the philosophical in the context of various influences within the French literary tradition. Her close reading of poems is remarkable because she not points out figures of speech, she points out the philosophy, she points out the rhythms, every element that goes into the making of a poem. She also looks at the tradition of French political writing, Aimé Césaire and France Fanon, who inspired uh, Manur Bab's work. Uh, my own problem with this erudite and well-researched book, and which I really truly admire, and as I said, it is path-breaking, it's pioneering, and I hope it will be followed by many more, is the introduction to, with the, you know, the introduction of an intellectual and theoretical scaffolding erected by quoting the 19th century philosopher Ernest Renan and, the, uh, and his idea of nation and nationalism. And nearer our times, Benedict Anderson, whose work, Imagined Communities, has been made, you know, has become part of uh, the popular imagination, particularly after Salman Rushdie wrote his book of essays, Imaginary, Im Imaginary Homeland, which is uh, really an expression of the imagined homeland of the exile, of the migrant, of the diaspora, who has to imagine a homeland because he's lost his homeland. So to define Goan heritage, I, I, I just read what I found problematic. And I find it problematic because the book is brilliant. And I just feel that, that somehow this uh, doesn't quite fit into Manor Bab's personality. And that's why I spoke about his personality. Uh, patriotism, uh, the, this section is called Cry My Beloved Homeland. Patriotism implies a nation. Goa, in spite of its administrative status, remains a small territory with a unique history of its own. Goa's colonial past gives it specific attributes typical of a country emerging from the process of decolonization. Goan poets and writers have time and again addressed Goa in lyrical and patriotic texts. Nostalgic Goan immigrants and others who have stayed back in their homeland have soulfully sung to the perennial beauty of Goa. Either through the captivating images that our poet creates, our poet being Manwar Bab, or through the clarion call he sounds to the people of his country, Goa is represented as a nation. He draws from the common collective past and from the present, this essential quality which unites Goans, or as Ernest Renan would have expressed, I quote, this is a quotation from Renan, a present day con con consent, the desire to live together, the will to perpetuate the value of the heritage that was once received in an undivided form. And then this goes on, I won't take your time, uh, I just feel that to define Goan heritage only in terms of its colonial past is a conservative view which is popular in some sections of our society, but I do not think that it is one that Manur Bab would have endorsed. It seems tantamount to co-opting his voice to express the conservative view of Goan society, which is not, I know, Edith's, uh, Edith's choice because her book what she writes is different from what Renan or what this paragraph says. Uh, indeed, in the later sections of the book, she talks very feelingly about Manohar Bab's Indian sensibility and how he abandoned the Sen because of the pull of the Ganga. So I feel that this constricts the deep Indian nationalism of Manohar Bab, whose love of Goa always and ever was inseparable from his love of his nation. And I will end my Bashan. <laughs> By, by quoting my favorite, you know, there's a lot that is positive and a lot and that is negative that has been written about my work. But Manur Bab uh, re released my book, my first book, that's the first book on Goa, Goa Doctor Story. Made a wonderful uh, speech in Konkani. And um, I will quote just one sentence from what he said. He said, Aurora Bai was brought up as a Catholic. She has learned a lot of French and English. I didn't really learn a lot of French. She has returned having gone around the world. She has totally absorbed in body and mind Western culture. But she has always tied firmly to the border of her sari, the knot of goodness and Indianness. Thank you. <laughs>